Why music? Because it couldn't be anything else. People always try to zero in on like, what is that factor that, that you need? And it's like, if you don't have it, you know, reading about it is not gonna give it to you, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's almost amazing to me that sort of the, the life of a studio musician and the gig of it, especially someone like me who, who my primary thing was playing on records, is that you're coming in and hearing a song for the first time and you're making it your own and you're coming up with a part that, you know, years down the road people know or, or many guitar players have had to learn and stuff. I was always like most artistic in my class and I just loved drawing and just sort of these stream of consciousness drawings and stuff and um, like millions of others when I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan it was just it was all over for me. In 12th grade in high school I knew that I wanted to go to this Berkeley music school in Boston. It, it sort of come down from some of the older musicians that I'd been around. It's like if you're serious at all about music you got to go to Berkeley. I wanted to come out here to LA and I wanted to make records and I wanted, you know, I used to read about the um, Larry Carlton and, and the big studio guys and wonder what it was like and, and I really liked the whole studio process. Yeah, the mentality of, of the guy on the road is you got to learn the parts that the guy came up with on the record and I always wanted to be that guy on the record. I, I seriously did, even from back before I knew how the whole Thing worked I'd hear you know uh, or I'd be learning like uh, you know Steve Cropper part and like man I want to be the guy that comes up with that part when I I mean I basically took the 80s to to break in to the thing I mean every year got better and stuff but I started it ground zero, doing every little demo and favor and $50 thing and stuff. And um, I can hear in my recorded stuff that I can hear the hunger and the, the just the wanting to do great and stuff. You know, in the busiest days of the session stuff all through the 90s and early 2000s and stuff, um, man, I mean, if you looked at my date book for, I saved my date books from those years and stuff, it's mind-boggling how busy I was. Then I, I remember I used to freak out when I'd have like four days off, thinking like, oh shit, I'm never gonna work again, you know, that kind of thing. I was in that mentality, it was like, I was just, and then I'd do like 10 days straight. And it, I mean, I was working a lot. One year I, I played on the Grammys, and the other acts on, on the thing, uh, TLC and Whitney Houston and um, a couple of other, bands the guitar players came up to me during that day hey man i just i just want to meet you i i man i had to learn your part on the thing and it was like four different groups i'm like wow this is this is cool but every day is a new day every song you're only as good as the last thing you played i always approached it like that not like hey man i played on last week's number one song very few people even a david foster he wants to see what i got if he was going to come up with every note he just get someone to execute that. The biggest guys that I got to work with him and Mutt Lang and Babyface and stuff. I mean, I found that they were they were wanting to know what I'm going to bring to it, but they shape it. They're so good at you know. The sessions with David, they put the tune up, the song of of the day, whatever we were going to work on, and I'd play through it once, and they'd be recording, and I'd do a little like or something in the middle of the tune. David would go, I like that and keep that and then we'd start at the intro and i'd try and come up with an intro part and then the first verse i'd lay out then the first b section i'd have a little sprinkle and then the chorus okay let's come up with a chorus thing but he kept that little thing i did in the middle because he liked it and that, that would happen a lot uh well i have my sort of daily schedule i get up and uh to have my coffee and the first thing I do and have done it since I was a kid is like, you know, diddle on my guitar sitting. Then I, uh, for 13 years, I've been doing this bike ride thing, this 21 mile. That's become one of the, the most important things in my life. It's like fa family music, bike ride. 
I've been with, with my wife, Glow, for 37 years since the streets of Boston. We've, she's been with me the whole, the whole trip. It's, it's really cool. We have this, well, it, it's my daughter Sahara's gigs, but, but we play, I'm in her band. I'm her guitar player. Last week we played at the Mint, Zach's the drummer, and um, it's fantastic. want it and, and be so hungry for it that, that you don't know any other, you know, failure's not an option and stuff, and, and it's, you just gotta have it, it's, it's gotta be everything to you. Mm -hmm. 